All right, so today we're talking about is the Triumph Street Scrambler a good beginner bike? All right, welcome back to the channel, guys. I'm Bash, and this is Nomad Scrambler. Today, today we are talking all about is the Triumph Street Scrambler a good beginner bike? Now, in the UK, we have three types of licenses. You have your A1, your A2, and your full A. Um, and obviously your L's for when you're learning, but you know, skip over that. <laughs> and if you're like me and you've gone and waited until you're 24 and come in on what's known as direct access, which means you can choose any bike you want, you're not restricted, is this bike gonna be good for you? Now, what I mean by that is the fact that, like for me, I did a week long course uh, intensive course to get me through test uh, through mod one mod two test and that was fine because I passed and I <laughs> I only took me a week to do it. it was great I only had to take a week off work and everything was fine that being said if you've come from that direct access like me and you are have only been on a bike for maybe like a week like for me I spent about a year riding around on L's and then uh, went into direct access, passed my test and bought this. If you had done everything, so CVT, theory test, um, and you'd never ridden a bike other than the intensive course that you did and you managed to pass, um, is this gonna be a good, a good first bike for you or is it kind of, overrated or too much bike for a beginner the only way to kind of like get get that across is to talk about it so there's a number of things that i'd say that a beginner might struggle with on this bike number one is the the weight it is a heavy bike it's 220 225 kilos on the curb and you definitely notice that weight when you're doing slow speed maneuvers so if you are new to riding a bike like when i bought mine yes you are probably going to struggle with slow speed maneuvers and you're going to want to practice so there's nothing wrong with just going into the local supermarket park like parking lot and practicing those uh, u-turns some figure of eights you know all the stuff you did on your cbt and uh, your mod one just because eventually like there you're going to be in a situation where you need to bang a u-turn and I mean, yeah, you pass your test, you can put your foot down, whatever. But do you really want to? Probably not. You want to like, you know, you want to get to grips with your bike and you want to be able to ride it to its full ability. Number two, it's got nice upright riding positions, which is great for a beginner. And I really like it, but it's completely naked again. So just remember that when you're uh, when you're buying it. I mean, you probably looked into all that before before considering it but no the upright riding position gives you nice commanding position over the bars i don't feel like i'm stretching out um, and i can really dip it into a corner which is quite nice and you don't feel bent over the tank it's not super aggressive it's kind of neutral which is good in my opinion for a, uh, a beginner rider uh moving on the power so the power from stock is kind of a bit lackluster i won't lie to you uh 64 brake horsepower if you coming on uh your a2 license obviously too much so we'll get that de-restricted or like restricted down for you uh for the cost of like i think it's like 25 quid from triumph they'll put a restricted kit on the bike so that you can ride it on an a2 license um but if you've got a full a license don't need a restriction kit you can just ride it at the 64 brake horsepower it's a manageable amount of horsepower as well like um great place to stop mate uh yeah it's a great place like it's a, a manageable amount of horsepower you don't feel like you're uh gonna be thrown off the back but you uh you have enough horsepower to like get you out of situations Oh yeah, go on, horses run, horses run! <laughs> that was sick, they just all started galloping when they heard it bark. Oh, sorry horses. 
good bit of horsepower from stock. However, I guess as you kind of like um, progress as a rider and like really get into owning this bike, you might, you know, you might decide that you want some more. And I, I mean, that's fair. Everyone decides eventually they want more horsepower. But if you like the bike, you've got the option of going to the Scrambler 1200, which has a much higher seating position, or you've got the option of putting a new camshaft in it so apparently this is the camshaft uh, that triumph should have put in the uh in the bike to begin with but they didn't because they obviously wanted to sell some triumph 1200s which is a bit peak man because like this camshaft that i think it's the tech bike parts camshaft this thing you put it in and the bike's pulling all the way to the rev limiter whereas this kind of like gets to a point where it slows down, which is not the end of the world. And yeah, I mean, if you're if you're happy with the, the low down torque like I am, I love the fact that this thing's torquey in the low end. I love the bark of the 270 degree crank. Then yes, you will not um, you will not mind. You will not mind the 64 brake horsepower. It like you don't miss it coming out of corners. There's a there's enough horsepower, even especially for a beginner rider. No matter whether you're on a an A2 or an A license, like you're, you, let's ease ourselves into the horsepower, yeah, rather than jumping on a, a 200 horsepower piss rocket and just like strapping on, you know. Other than that, I mean, this is a comfortable first bike. It's the seat's good. Um, I mean, if you're going to do any like, form of commuting on it, enjoy wearing a rucksack because your luggage rack's about the size of a small plate. Uh, but no, it it does look sick. Um, it's moddable, and if that's something you're into, if that's something you want to get into in your first bike, creating a custom bike, something that's slightly different from factory, then yeah, you're going to love love the like aftermarket support for triumph and uh yeah 100 percent recommend this as a first bike if you're looking for that kind of like modern retro styling because it's uh it's pretty perfect in that it looks old old but it's got that modern ability to it and yeah like why would you not want to give something like this a go it is honestly great bike can't recommend it enough it's just going to be nice and like a comfortable first bike that's going to ease you into kind of the riding life uh, this for me a great beginner bike obviously there's so many different beginner bikes out there but in the retro market for me it's got to be this it's got to be the scrambler 900 i i mean i'm obviously going to say that i love this bike but you know how it is. We all fall in love with a different bike. And then we want to keep it forever. A couple of little 30 rows today, I felt like, you know, just chilling. All right, that's going to be it for today's video, guys. If you've not already seen the previous video, why you need to wear motorcycle gear, go ahead and check that out in the description. Um, we're giving away a whole... There's a sick giveaway attached. There's a, an absolutely sick giveaway attached that I'm paying for out of my own money because I believe in the products and I want to get more people riding in gear. So if you've not seen that video, go and check it out. Go and leave a like on that video. Like this video if you do. Subscribe if you aren't already and ring the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. And, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.